ELD with Brainstorm MTG back with some more split-second coverage of Legacy. This was filmed live at Scholars Games in Brockton, Massachusetts at our Wednesday Night Legacy. And here we have Elves up against Jeff's Abzan deck. You could call it Maverick. You can call it Junk. There's a lot of different uh, ways that you could look at this deck. Overall, uh, Jeff is brewing in this space. Uh, the cards that you typically are going to see here are Stoneforge Mystic, perhaps Knight of the Reliquary, perhaps Dark Confidant, uh, kind of whatever he feels like in green, white, or black. And starting out with a Thought Season, another staple of the deck is that discard that allows you to figure out what lines you want to take and also slows down your opponent. And it looks like here we've got Green Sun Zenith, Elvish Visionary, Nettle Sentinel, Wirewood Symbiote, and Crater Hoof. Taking the Symbiote, kind of indicating that he may have a bunch of creature removal uh, making this hand keepable. We're just going to plow forward and get that Dryad Arbor. The deck's so much better having two mana on the... I'm sorry, three or more mana on the second turn. And it looks like just a, a little quick assist. We had a brand new player at the tournament this week borrowing a sneak and show list. And he just needed a little clarification of what was in the sideboard uh, and what was in the main. Uh, intuition is split in my list there. And back to Jeff. Got a, another basic land into Stoneforge for Jit. That is one of the strongest cards versus Elves. Of course, most of the creatures are 1-1s. One uh, so the ability to just, just continue to pick off creature after creature, hugely problematic. And Wirewood Symbiote. So one of the downsides of Jit here is going to be the speed. I will get an untap step before he's able to cast and equip. And we've got a Nettle Sentinel. All right. The so Nettle Sentinel does stop Stoneforge from swinging. It will kill Stoneforge if it does pick up the Jit. Uh, or more likely what we will see, which is kind of the best line versus the Jit, is to be able to block and then return before damage. Uh, of course, Queer and Ranger can also allow for that, returning your Dryad Arbors. Uh, so there are a lot of cards in the deck here which will allow for that. And of course, Elvish Visionary, probably the best of the bunch here. And going to go ahead and get that two damage in. Stoneforge not going to be interested in blocking that at all. And Heritage Druid untapping. So we now have Heritage Druid and Nettle Sentinel online. A Glimpse of Nature could potentially make this very good. Getting three mana, untapping, another visionary, drawing. So we've got a one green mana floating. And Queer and Ranger, so that'll actually allow us to pick up that Dryad Arbor if necessary. So we've got Jit beat a couple of different ways here. And there is a Windswept Heath that can fetch another Dryad Arbor. Uh, so you have a lot of different ways that even if Jeff can make a land drop, equip, and swing, it's really not going to end particularly well. Uh, Wasteland does have some interesting interactions here with those Dryad Arbors. Of course, once it's declared as a blocker, though, it's a blocker. Uh, so Jit not going to get the counters here, returning that Elvis Visionary, and that really is going to be hugely problematic. Uh, Tarmogoyf, not much of a threat here uh, with so much ability to pick up blockers before damage, uh, both with the Symbiote and the Queer and Ranger. See here, at any point here, a Natural Order or a Crater Hoof Behemoth could just spell the end of the game. Banking a little bit, counting the mana, I mean, We've got seven mana without untapping. Like seven. Going to use Queer and Ranger to return, untap, perhaps play a land. No, just, just Crater Hoof, untap. I mean, that should do it right there. Looks like plus eight, plus eight to each one of these creatures. And Jeff packing it up, probably one of the only cards that could have even interacted with that would be Snuff Out, and that four life would have been uh, 
not really well spent in that particular situation as it was going to be Jeff either way. Jeff looks like he's grabbing some pithing needles. See what else he's got here. Maelstrom pulse. And on my side, perhaps considering abrupt decay, probably not worth bringing in. If he does have a card like Graft Digger's Cage, generally you don't really care that much. It does shut off your Green Sun Zenith and your Natural Order. It's a very solid card to bring in, uh, but it's not really an Elves' best role to be bringing in tons of answers that don't play well with your combo. More Reclamation Sages would be very welcome. But just in general, playing Abrupt Decay, that's more for cards that you absolutely have to answer. Cards like Chalice of the Void, where you're just completely locked out of the game and aren't even able to play. Uh, other than that, you're pretty much comfortable just playing through uh, a card like Draft Digger's Cage, uh, which is a very common sideboard card versus Elves. And it looks like a Gaia's Cradle and a Glimpse... Not going to be good enough there. Going to need a fetch, a forest, or a dual land to get that party started. As powerful as Cradle is, it is not a card without any drawbacks. While it counts as a land for your deck building purposes, you do have to realize it's not going to be useful on the first turn. Barring a very few corner cases uh, with things like crop rotation. And that's pretty much more just in Vintage where you have other acceleration as well. Here we go. What Jeff comes up with here. Towards the Plowshares, Deathrite. That is a weak hand. A whole bunch of lands on the elf side of the table. Jeff scrying, not finding a land, and I'm actually going to get to go first here. In terms of making a land drop, Jeff just completely passing on his first turn. Uh, so oh, it looks like I almost forget to draw here. And commit to the board with death right in a bayou off the top into dueling death rights. Fetch land. Definitely welcome there. Gonna allow for three mana on this second turn. We'll see what I'm able to do with it. Looks like Glimpse, so it's gonna be a little bit of action. Wirewood Symbiote, drawing, Deathrite Shaman, removing. Gonna get a, at least a couple of cards off of this. That looks like it's gonna do it. Those Symbiotes will be useful against creature removal, but they do not allow you to Untap the death right. Would have needed another elf. And cradle, a nice draw here. That's symbiote. Now cradle comes down and taps for three. And natural order would be phenomenal here. It's going to be X equals two, getting an elvish visionary. So that draw engine is online. And without a land in the graveyard, Deathrite's not going to tap from mana. So that is going to do it for that Glimpse turn. Wasteland taking out that Guy's Cradle, which does turn Deathrite Shaman back online. And end of turn, going to go ahead and eat probably Abrupt Decay. And there's Containment Priest. So Jeff taking a, a moment here to exile his land, get in Containment Priest, and that's going to stop Green Sun Zenith and Natural Order. A much better response to those cards. Uh, but seeing as how that creature is not actually going to be taken off the board anytime soon, it really doesn't make too much of a difference here. And it looks like Elvish Visionary getting picked up and put back down. With the Wirewood Symbiote, getting those extra card draws. Elves really able to do all the things that you would want a blue deck to do in the format. Draws extra cards, it has mana acceleration, has a combo finish. In a lot of ways, it feels like a vintage deck. 
and that scavenging ooze coming down. And that is what I like to do in terms of answering sideboard cards. A card like Containment Priest, I'm much more comfortable answering with a card like Scavenging Ooze, where I just go over the top of their disruption. And Swords of Plowshares targeting the Wirewood Symbiote probably should have targeted that Scavenging Ooze, because that's going to threaten to get pretty big pretty fast. And it looks like Jeff attempting to use Death Rite, and we slowed that down with an untap and a use of scavenging ooze with the mana generated. So Jeff denied that mana. Probably for a three mana card, seeing as how that stopped his turn dead in his tracks. Another Wywood Symbiote, so this is going to be tough to kill elves, that's for sure. And Scavenging Goose can just come right in at a 3-3, very difficult to deal with right now on board. He's probably going to need to use a removal spell on it. And he does, in fact, have a Swords to Plowshares. Looks like it might be an Iconic Masters one. A few different looks there. We are firmly in the danger zone for Jeff here. At any time, a natural order threatens to just completely blow the game out. And picking up and putting down that Elvish Visionary. Does not look like there are any lands that the Deathrite Shaman could be using for fuel here. And gonna do it again. That Dryad Arbor should have been tapped on that first time through. That would have been better to be untapping the Dryad Arbor with the Wirewood Symbiote. So a little loose play there. Uh, but really pulling quite far ahead on board here, regardless. Jeff with just the one card in hand. Elvis Visionary continuing to just generate just mounds of card advantage here. Just getting picked up and put back down, drawing three cards per turn to Jeff's one. Is just a avalanche of green men here. Another Visionary. Riot Arbor. Another Queer and Ranger. Got to feel really comfortable here. Those Deathrite Shamans uh, will be able to remove instants or sorceries. So this is a supremacy on my side of the board here. Two on one uh, means that even though Jeff could try and counteract the first one, I could essentially just follow up with another activation. And there's Lingering Souls here. Uh, really a little lackluster with me at 23. Jeff going to need more than that. Maybe some equipment to go on to a flyer to try and pull his way back into this game. So much mana on this side of the board. Seven lands in total. Easily in casting Crater Hoof territory. And that's actually what it is here. Crater Hoof. That's going to be giving plus, what do we've got? Five, seven, nine, plus nine, plus nine to all of those creatures. That is absolutely brutal. And puts an end to that game right there. Uh, so that is the end of that match. Uh, looks like Containment Priest not enough to stop Crater Hoof from entering, as just had to cast it the old-fashioned way. Uh, this has been ELD with another split second for Brainstorm MTG. Thanks for watching.